We're really excited to release the IPFS alpha. Our first implementation is written in Go. It includes a fully functioning IPFS node, a Unix style command line interface, an importable library, a JSON API for controlling the node programmatically, a gateway for exposing IPFS to regular web browsers, and a web UI for managing your node. There's a lot in this package, um, and I'll just give you a very quick uh, overview of some of the things you can do and just let you loose on it. This machine doesn't even have IPFS right now, so if I do which IPFS, it, it's not there. Um, we can uh, get IPFS and install it by uh, just doing go get uh, with a URL. Uh, this is, uh, of course, posted on, on the repo page and so on. Uh, so that will download IPFS and it will download its dependencies and compile. So now we can run IPFS and we get this long list of commands. So IPFS, Global Peer-to-Peer -peer Merkle DAG File System. That's great. Uh, the way you use most IPFS commands is like this. You have some uh, set of some command uh, and you're able to uh, describe arguments uh, and so on. Uh, at any point you can do dash dash help, of course. Uh, there's some basic commands like uh, initializing a node, adding and, and catting files, uh, inspecting objects. There's uh, some data structure commands. Uh, there's commands to manipulate the daemon, um, and you add pin certain objects to make sure they don't get garbage collected, uh, mount the file system, and so on. There's some network commands to manipulate the connections or be able to inspect them. And then there is a set of tool commands. All right, let's get started. So. Uh, at this point, I will init my node, which will create a, um, a key pair and will set up a repository. Think of it a little bit like Git, where there is a local repository with a database of objects. Um, great, so that uh, this is the my peer identity. It's uh, the hash of my public key. Uh, and I was also given this hash to get started. So, should be able to copy this and paste it. Um, so hello and welcome to IPFS. And uh, it just gives you some rough uh, introduction and it shows you a few files uh, that can help you get started. So uh, if we were to, were to look at the same file, but instead of readme, we look at quick start, uh, we'll see a whole bunch of commands that we can try. Uh, so we'll go through a few of these. So don't worry about that, you can do this on your own. Um, all right, so what can I do with IPFS? Uh, in this, I have created this demo directory locally, uh, which has uh, a picture of a cat, a directory called test, and a picture of a tree. So we can you know, inspect some of these and like, just check them out. Uh, you know, this is just standard process system stuff, so great. I can ask P2P web. Uh, all right, let's put this cat on the peer-to-peer -peer web. Uh, I can do IPFS dat add dash r dot, which will add the entire local directory. Of course, can add specific files. Um, and as I do that, you see that it's it's added um, the local directory and every file inside of it as well. And it's added this test directory inside. Um, and you see, by the way, the these two files, test slash bar and test slash baz slash b, have the same hash, which uh, means that they actually are the same file. So if we diff, diff them, b, yep, sure enough, we see that they are in fact the same file. All right, so these files are now added to IPFS, uh, which means that we can, uh, you know, ls this hash. Uh, and so check it out. And so this is sort of the equivalent of this ls here, um, where it shows us the file name over here and the size and the hash. So we can take an object and IPFS cat it, and we can pipe that into you know cat2.jpg. Uh, and so now we have like cat and cat2, which we pulled out of IPFS. And we can inspect that and check it out and great. So uh, we can see that it's the same same picture. In fact, let's just open both of them. More of them, the better. Awesome. Um, great. 
So there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do inspecting the objects and so on. But perhaps the cooler stuff is when they when we go online. So let's take uh, let's initialize our daemon, and this has started an API um, HTTP server and a gateway uh, to HTTP, and has begun connecting to the network. So let's inspect that. Let's uh, we can do IPFS ID, which shows us our local ID and our public key. Uh, and this is kind of a command that you can run, you can run on other nodes. Uh, and this gives us our addresses. So here we have four local addresses. Uh, you know, we're listening in localhost. We are listening on our internal local address here. We're listening on IP address and so on. And we actually have a double NAT going on here. Um, and so you know, we'll see how NAT traversal works. Uh, and we have like some versions of the protocols, cool. Uh, now, if you do IPFS swarm peers, and of course these commands are all listed in the dash dash help, uh, we can see who we are connected to. So uh, we've connected to a few bootstrap nodes, which have given us a whole bunch of other nodes. Um, and that's kind of cool. So let's maybe inspect one of these nodes. Uh, we can say IPFS ID on that IP address, on the, sorry, on that, um, the hash of the key, and so that will connect to that node and run ID on that node. And so we see that these are the addresses that it thinks it has its own local host. It has a 172 dot and a 178 dot uh, set of addresses. Uh, this is probably a Docker container and uh, the outside uh, and the actual external address. Uh, that's really cool. Uh, but so I'm connected to people. Uh, so what? Uh, I mentioned earlier that we have this now, this uh, HTTP gateway, right? So let's go to the web for a second. Sorry, I had other stuff open. Um, and open localhost uh, 8080 slash IPFS slash, uh, and we are going to put in that hash, which is the picture of the cat. So when we enter it, we see the picture of the cat. Now, uh, this means that this IP, HTTP server, so running on localhost 8080, uh, is making everything that you've added to IPFS locally in your local node uh, available to HTTP. Now, let's check out something cooler. So let's take this node that we saw here. Um, and it's actually one of our, our gateways. And we can uh, find out the IPFS gateway by just going to gateway dot ipfs dot io and we can go slash ipfs and give it the same hash which let's do it in a different window so we see that, see it load uh, and so what this will do is it'll it'll hit a request and that node will resolve the file in a dht contact me and pull it out uh, and to then serve it over http so uh, <laughs> that was pretty fast right so it um and just pull the file uh, locally. So this, again, remember that this is on the gateway, so it's added some files. We can do it again. In fact, we can try out the tree the tree picture. Uh, we can actually resolve paths, so maybe we can, can show how that, that works. So if we take this hash instead, which was the, the local directory, we can do this, which will list the directory, and then we can like click on the tree in the Cosmos picture. This is a much bigger file, so let's see how long it takes it to pull it out from my computer. It's close to a megabyte. Oh, there we go. That wasn't it. I think it was just resolving in the DHT. Uh, you know, great. So we can make it really big because it's very pretty. That's cool. All right, so I've shown you so far um, how to move some objects around, but uh, how about we kick it up a notch? Uh, let's try some video. So there is a, a video file that I've uh, added to a remote machine and it's being seeded uh, to the network in this remote machine. And so let's try and check it out locally. So again, I'm, I'm going to localhost 8080 slash IPFS slash uh, a big hash and slash play, which is actually a video player. And we can give it uh, another path as an argument, sort of kind of like a function or running an application. So I'm gonna run a JavaScript player uh, in the browser and I'm gonna download the entire thing with IPFS. So let's go. I just press enter. Wow, that was almost instantaneously. Uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, 
Yeah, so this is uh, video streaming over IPFS uh, to, so my node, I'm gonna turn that volume down. So my node is pulling uh, all of the file from IPFS and then serving it to my local host HTTP so I can stream it. Wow, right? Uh, I can show you other video, other other videos. Uh, let's uh, try it through VLC this time. So um, got VLC open here, so we can do like open in the network and um, so localhost. And this is this is a different different video. Uh, so let's try opening that. And VLC will usually takes a little bit of time to resolve. Oh, that was pretty quick. Uh, wow. So now it's playing. And this is pulling the entire thing from the network from some other set of servers that are hosting it. And uh, we can actually seek, uh, seek forward, and it starts grabbing the file wherever I saw to. And you know, I can keep, keep going. That's a pretty mean squirrel. Cool. This is just like the standard VLC. This is how it, if it doesn't get a keyframe, it'll just show it this way. Um, great, there, there's the keyframe. Uh, cool, so that's uh, streaming locally, but uh, I want to show you even another way of doing it, which is to uh, mount the file system. So this means, uh, so if I do IPFS uh, mount, uh, this is now started fuse uh, locally. So I have now a, um, you know, I have a slash uh, IPFS and slash IPNS um, that expose all of the IPFS objects through uh, the network. So I actually can look at some of these files that I had before. So, you know, I can ls my directory. Uh, so I can actually cd in there, uh, kind of like I would into any, any other file and like look at these these files that I added before, right? So, and I can use open and so on. It's It exposes it like, like a regular processor. Uh, awesome, so, you know, same picture of the cat again. That's pretty cool. So what about uh, showing the video? So let's grab that link again. Um, actually, let's grab a different one. Uh, this is a, yet another cool open source movie. Uh, and then open it with VLC. So vlc.app directly from the file system. So this is not from the HTTP gateway, but directly from Fuse. And let's check it out. Uh, move over to VLC. Cool. Turn the volume up. Get started. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it took us a while to get here. I can see. Uh, oh, so it's pretty violent. Yeah, so you can see seeking is it's pretty fast. Um, this is we have a pretty slow connection here. Um, our ISP is not great, uh, and we it's actually sorry good because it helps us keep a more realistic expectations of how people out there in the real world use the internet. Uh, cool. So I hope uh, you like that. So uh, there's one more thing uh, I want to show you before we go. We have a web UI that can help you manage your notes. So if we go to uh, 127 .0 .0 .0 .1, uh, 5001.0.1 slash web UI, we'll make this easily accessible uh, from the command line too. Uh, this will take us to our web UI. And so this actually downloaded the entire web application from the network. Uh, this does not ship with the, with the code. Um, you have to download it. Uh, so if you're not uh, connected at the beginning, uh, this won't work for you the very first time. After you have it, then you're fine. But this helps illustrate how you might deploy uh, web applications entirely in an entirely distributed manner, right? You can just give people a link and that just downloads the application and runs it locally for them. Um, great, so this is a, a regular standard front-end JavaScript as you normally uh, would find in the web. Uh, and this all, working with uh, IPFS links. So all of the code that it's using, all of the assets, all of the images and so on are delivered with IPFS. So they're all locally, local here. Or if they haven't been fetched, it's because I haven't uh, touched them yet. So it so might be just uh, fetching only what it needs at this point. So this shows me uh, my local node. It shows me the PRID. It shows me the versions of the protocols. It shows me the my public key and my network addresses. I have a whole bunch of other tabs I can go into 
connections, which shows me a globe with uh, the peers that I'm currently connected to. And here I can see a whole list of them, so I can inspect them. Uh, I can look at them. This one's San Francisco. This one's in London. I can let's look at some other ones. Uh, this one is, who knows? I think it's probably because uh, it only has local uh, connections. Uh, here's one in San Francisco again. Um, more San Francisco, a lot of San Francisco. I guess that's where uh, people are at. This one's in New York, and so on. Cool. So we have a whole bunch of peers, and of course you can see them here uh, overlaid on the globe. Uh, there's one in Singapore and Australia. All right, so then we can go to the, f whoa, what happened to my browser? That's weird. Um, so we can go to the Files tab, and uh, this is actually really cool. We can drag and drop files from the file system onto the web. So let's take that uh, picture of the cat and add it to IPFS. And now it's there, so we've we've just added it here, and we see it in this list, and we can, uh, you know, copy the hash so to be able to give it to somebody, or we can, uh, you know, click the, I think raw is, it shows it to us. Uh, cool. So that's the cat on the web, uh, and now we can also inspect. Dag is this really cool command that shows us the actual data underneath the uh, the object. So here. This cat seems like it's all in one object because it's it's not too big. Uh, but if we look maybe at the um, at the web UI itself, and we take the hash of the web UI and paste it in there and press enter, then we're now exploring the web UI. And so it, this shows us several um, uh, links here. So this means that the web UI has an index.html, has a package.json, has a static directory. Maybe we can let's go into static. So it has a bunch of .js, some CSS, some fonts, images, jQuery, you know, the standard stuff. Uh, and, you know, we can look at any one of these files. And so all of the, the assets of, yeah, so here, uh, you know, it has several blocks because it's a pretty big file. So we can see all this uh, JavaScript. So you can build entire web applications just like you've been building them up until now and use IPFS as a way to deploy them in an entirely distributed way. Uh, so all of the assets that this web UI is using are hosted only on IPFS. Uh, later on, we'll build a tool uh, that will only load uh, web applications that only have uh, that are only loading assets from IPFS itself, because it lets you know that the entire application will continue to function uh, when you're disconnected from the regular network. Uh, cool. So you know, there's a whole bunch of other things here that we can explore. We can look at files. We can see uh, files you have pinned. We can see all of the objects that you have locally. Uh, we can look at, we should also Dag Explorer. We can look at our config, which means like, this is, we're actually gonna remove that uh, private key from here. We'll put it in its own file. Um, we can see the bootstrap nodes. So these are the, the set of nodes that we are currently connecting to at the very beginning when we first connect to the network. Uh, we can see, um, you know, some other options and we can see logs. So this is an event log that shows you kind of what's going on in the internal node. Uh, this is mostly for debugging. Uh, but if you're interested in developing part of stuff, you can take a look. Uh, so it's tailing the log. So, you know, it's like, it's, there's a lot of stuff going on. So you don't want to stay on this page too long. Um, all right. So that's uh, the IPFS web UI. Hope you like it. Uh, please let us know if you have any, any uh, questions and so on. Uh, definitely file issues and uh, let us know what you would like to see on it. Cool.